right? We're here. We're here. The most anticipated video, according to the last week or two, um, of having this discussion with y'all on the M1 Mac Mini. Um, does After Effects run, and how does it run and perform on the brand new Apple Silicon M1 Mac Mini? Take a shot. Um, so today we're going to talk about After Effects. Now keep in mind here, been testing out Premiere Pro on this machine, and keep in mind that the Adobe apps actually aren't fully supported. Um, heck, they're not even supported to work on the M1 chip. So this is all based on comparison of how things are in the current state, how the current setup is, and how does unsupported software work on an unsupported chip is essentially what this is. Um, we did Premiere Pro, if you haven't checked out those videos yet, um, I've got a couple of links here for you to go check out. Those are for the Premiere Pro videos performing on this machine. Now with After Effects, After Effects is a different ballgame because it's so complex. We could talk about light text graphics, we could talk about 3D rendering, we could get really in depth here. I'm going to show you what I generally use After Effects for and how it performs with the files natively on the machine. So. Stick around and let's get into it. So here we are, we're gonna talk about After Effects here on this machine and keep in mind that I don't do a lot of 3D rendering. I don't do super intense After Effects. If anything, I'll do some light animation or I'll do character animations as well. So I'm gonna show you how it performs here. The files are on the internal storage. And this has been really great because I've been wanting to update my opener. So the opener you saw just before this is built in After Effects. Um, there's quite a few different layers on there. There's color layers, there's uh, just different layers and layers and layers of, of effects and video in there to kind of give it kind of a cool opening look. So I have the project opened here. Um, I'm gonna turn this resolution preview to full and I'm just gonna hit space bar here so you can see how this thing performs. It's on full, it's processing. This clip is only about maybe 23 to about 24 seconds long. And this is the full render here. I know, not impressive, right? And I want you to keep in mind that this machine works great with Apple supported applications. After Effects not being one of them for the M1 chip here. So you can see it's still just playing just this first sequence. We'll let this go. So let me pause. I'm gonna switch the resolution to half. Hit play on the preview. And it's still doing just as awesome. You can see an effect come into the screen here. Let me pause. Let's go to quarter resolution. You know, we're gonna skip third. Let's go straight, straight to quarter. That's a little better, but it's still just as bad. You can see the um, After Effects transition there. Kind of lagging, super laggy. After Effects is pretty laggy on this um, when it comes to these complex layers. But scrubbing, if I'm scrubbing, let's see, those first ones work great. If I'm scrubbing to the latter part of the timeline, it does all right on a quarter resolution. You see that? It hasn't even processed through the rest of it yet. So as I scroll, it's, it's looking pretty good. But if I hit play, quarter resolution really isn't too bad. But look at these layers here. For example, if we go into this layer, this first sequence here with the delicate arch, we've got a couple of different layers here that perform those effects. And so it's pretty laggy as I drag this over. Preview, looking pretty good. And there are layers upon layers. We're gonna go in one more layer here. And it's just the media file there. So if you look at my project timeline here, there's quite a few different things going on. They're just all hidden. So that is an After Effects project with video in it. These are all 4K videos. Let's go look at composition settings. This is 1920 by 1080. So it's compacting that 4K footage into a 1080 timeline. So that is how After Effects performs 
Again, not anything different than what I've already experienced with my 2013 MacBook Pro, honestly. They may perform equally just as well with each other. So let's close out this project. What we're gonna do is open another one that I found here. So let's take a look at this next video project. This plays through, it has a car, the front, the side. So more of the front, this is at full resolution, has the side again, then it goes into uh, this logo here. I'm gonna click on it. Let's take a look at the logo. So we can see here that the automobile, the two videos, they are video files for the car, so those aren't 3D rendering. As for the logo animation, let's go into there. Let's drill down some more. Got a few different layers here. It has the outline. It has the outline inside. And let's go in more. So that's where I have a version of the logo. Then you go in one more layer, and that's where I dropped my logo in there. So jumping back out to the full 1080 render, let's preview it at full. I'm going to tap the space bar here. And it's going, it's going. It's a little faster than the previous project that we looked at um, in rendering. But what if I chalk this down to quarter? Quarter looks pretty good when I preview. So Again, After Effects is performing a little bit better with this project here. This project's not as heavy as the first one we looked at. But I want to show you a third project that contains items that I usually use, things like lower thirds and titles. All right, taking a look at what we have here next. This is a 1080 timeline. It has text for lower thirds and titles. And this is majority of what I use After Effects for in my YouTube videos. I'm going to hit the space bar here. We have a full resolution. And it's previewing pretty smooth. Goes through all these different things. I've got, I've got to say, on my on my 2013 MacBook Pro, I couldn't preview this in full; it would lag. So that's pretty awesome. And look, as I scrub the timeline, it's at full resolution. That's looking pretty good. Let's go into one of the layers here. Let's look at our options here. We got two different text color options and the line color option for just that first sequence. Um, but that's pretty snappy. Go to full. So as you can see, nothing you didn't know already is that After Effects can be either really complex or really simple, like, like we've seen. And if it's really complex, obviously it's gonna take a lot more machine power as we've seen in the first sequence. What I wanna do next is I wanna export the new opener and see how long that takes. So let's add to Adobe Media Encoder. All right, now I'm gonna start that render. As that's rendering out, I also wanna remind you that again, After Effects is unsupported for the M1 chip. We're getting some decent performance, nothing surprising, nothing groundbreaking. If you wanna really talk about performance, let's talk about the Apple apps. You know, Final Cut Pro is, you know, blazing, blazing hot speeds. You can see it all over YouTube here. Go check it out. And uh, it's just it's just tearing it up if you do Final Cut. But I do hope that Adobe does support this machine soon or, or in the near future because I really like the M1 machine. It's very, very quiet. There's a lot of pros and cons. And also, I'm getting a lot of questions about, um, about you know, this is gonna be my first computer. I'm gonna do a lot of video editing. I would say that if you're doing Final Cut, this is the great machine. Any of these M1 machines are perfect for that. I've also heard that Resolve was awesome on this machine because Resolve is now optimized for this M1 chip. But if you're like me and you're using Adobe, the Creative Cloud Suite, it performs okay on this machine. And okay for me is good enough because if it's okay right now, comparable to the speeds I've been used to in the past and the performance I've been used to in the past, then that means in the future, when and if Adobe does support this machine, then, then it'll perform even better. So I'm hoping for that. All right, it stopped rendering. And you know what? Using Adobe Media Encoder to export this um, project out, uh, the time, this is how long it took. It took 12 minutes and 17 seconds. Pretty pretty lengthy time still for a 24 second video, um, but it's not, super, and it's not super graphic intensive with After Effects either. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you um, 3D animators out there are doing a lot more complex projects here. And so this is just a pretty much, uh, a, lighter weight opener video and yeah 
for 12 minutes and 17 seconds, I, I would say this, is that in its current state, currently where, where the Mac Mini is at and where Adobe is at with their tools, if you wanted to buy this machine for After Effects, I would recommend not. I don't think this is the machine yet right now in time. Now, would, that may change in the future. Like I mentioned, if there is support that is gonna be built for these, for these applications, but right now in time, I would recommend After Effects is not gonna be your tool here, but still the Intel chip machines that Apple does have, I think that those are great machines, and if you wanna do After Effects, do those. But if you really wanna get more bang for your buck, build a machine, build a Windows machine, build it for After Effects and graphics editing, and I think you're gonna be better off there at this current point in time. So that is the After Effects video. What did you think? Would you have more questions about it? I did as much as I could do in this brief turnaround time because I wanted to help you make the decision before Black Friday comes around and before you go spending your dollars on whatever computer it is that you want next. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are and please share with a friend. Hit subscribe if you found value in this video and you wanna see more like it. Um, we're probably not gonna talk about the Mac Mini anymore for quite a bit. Um, I've, I have a whole shelf of like products back there that I wanna talk to you about with, with the gear and camera and tech. And yeah, this is a fun adventure. So hit subscribe, join me on this adventure. Thank you so much for all the love and support that you've given me so far and happy holidays. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.